Back to JT Gatoring. So today we're going to be messing with some alligator skulls. We're going to go ahead and turn these heads into skulls. Just going to do a European mount. Uh, pretty simple from what I've watched. Um, we're going to go ahead and get after it. This is my version of doing a European alligator head mount. So just heating up that water. These tubs, I got two different sizes. I have this tub, and then I have this tub. This one's a lot bigger. It's by Barons, I guess. I have a link down below in my Amazon store too. So, but this one will fit eight-foot alligator heads, perfect. Uh, this is a little turkey cooker, propane, pretty simple. I'm getting my temperature with one of these Harbor Freight point shoot laser temperature things got jack stands just in case I need to use a bigger one to help uh, keep it level on there because that base isn't too big on there but this fits fairly good on there so we're going to go ahead and need it. Don't forget also that you got to uh, defrost your heads. I've been having these heads frozen. I've had these heads for about three to four years now so we'll see how, how they do. Have a list. These are my little forceps. Not little, they're 12 inches long, so they'll reach up into that nose. Got the Havilon blade, just like usual. I got the round tip on it, that's the 70A blade with the scalpel handle. Absolutely love that scalpel handle, it's a number eight. Uh, got my Grundens and my boots. It's my uh, splash screen, so when I'm pressure washing, it doesn't just go everywhere. And then I got some detergents to put into the water. And then that's my trash can. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, get these skulls out. They're right now they're in uh, black plastic bags and a cooler just defrosting. Make sure to do that. I did this the night before and it's about the afternoon right now, so a good 12 hours. And I think they're they're thawed all the way through. It's still cold, but they're thawed. So I'll go ahead and drop them in here. And then uh, it's that simple, but in this pot of water, I'm not gonna bring it to a boil, not a rolling boil. There's a little bit of bubble and suds, but I'm gonna try to keep it pretty low because I don't wanna bake these skulls. If you bake them, then they crack and do all kinds of nasty things. So just try to keep the temperature low. The only thing you're trying to do is loosen up that meat so you can get the meat off of the bone. Now, I am gonna put some detergent in there and see how that is supposed to speed the process up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that too. So I'm going to get these heads in here, and then I'll get back to you. Right now we're floating at about 170. So they are re-experimenting with the smallest that I have, and then some alligator scoots. do this kind of stuff always keep one hand clean that'll be my right hand left hand is always dirty ahead and throw some detergent in there. All right, gonna go ahead and add some laundry detergent. The skin's starting to come off a little bit, so we'll go ahead, drop the scoots in there, and then take that head out and start pressure washing it.
thing that I like is copper wire this is what the size is to me now what I've been doing is using it as a pick to get the gel from out in between the teeth because I don't want to blow them too hard with the pressure washer and it gets the majority of that I can also make it into a hook so that way if you have a hard time getting the stuff out of here you can bend it to how you like get it in there pull it out, make it loose, and then use the pressure washer to get it off. So this is how it's going so far. It's getting late, so we'll pick it up next time. And um, I'm just gonna be using this copper rod to get in the hard to reach areas that I can't use the pressure washer at. So we'll go ahead, continue on tomorrow. For you, it'll be this clip right now.
right now we got the second skull on. Um, this time I didn't mess with any raw meat. I just dumped the head right in there. Um, just less to clean up. I'd rather deal with cooked meat than raw meat and not have any blood everywhere. So went ahead, put it in the boil, um, put it in the bin, filled it with water, put the detergent in it, and then turned the propane on to let it heat up all together at once instead of doing a hot soak. Just have it in there. It's been about 30 minutes. Temperature is staying at about 180. I don't want to get it to a roll rolling boil or anything. Um, the water's steaming. There's soap suds, and there's some small bubbles, but there's no uh, no rolling big bubbles or anything like that. So that's what's going on right now. What I'm going to do is once I can scrub the top of the head with that forcep, then that's when I'll uh, take it out and I'll start pressure washing it. But last time I think I took it out too early, and it wasn't ready to be pressure washed, and all the stuff was just hard to get off. So I'm going to let it do a, a solid cook this time and then take it out and then work on it. All right, looks like our alligator head is there. Took about 30 minutes, 35 minutes. Um, water temperature is about 180 and uh, it's in between 160 and 180. But I can grab it and flesh is starting to peel off the jaw like right off the bone. I can scrape on top of the head and all the black stuff on top is starting to come right off. So go ahead, take it out, start pressure washing it once it's cool to the touch. Go ahead, split that jaw, cut it in half, and then I'll go ahead and put the top half in the boil. And then I'll work on the jaw because the jaw needs less boiling. It's pretty much hollow in there. So I'm um, going to go ahead, take it out, try to separate the jaw from the head, put the head back in, work on the jaw, and then we'll just keep swapping them until everything's perfect. Now one thing that I found on the last skull was that... Um, the things in between the teeth, like the gum line, is almost cartilage. It's really thick, really f uh, hard fat. It's pretty much just a cartilage, and it's really hard to get off. I started using the copper wire here, and just use that to floss. So I just poke it, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, go from the outside, and then go from the inside, and then put it back in the boil take it back out and pressure wash it real light. You don't have to get down in there and just blow it from the side so you don't blow any teeth out. I didn't blow any teeth out last time, so it was awesome. And um, just do it that way, and I've had good luck. So we're gonna go ahead and try that, see if I can't get a close up of it for you, and then uh, go from there. This is what I was talking about here. So you just take this and just push it through. Normally I would get more out from in between the teeth, but instead of putting so much pressure on those teeth, using this method, you if you're worried about losing them, you can just do it this way. You don't gotta get all of it with this, it's just you're loosening it up so when you put the pressure washer on it, it'll come off a lot easier. So did the majority of it from the outside. You can go back in from the inside. I'm gonna keep going around. But the other problem that you get is up and there. Up inside that jaw. 
White Bones Creation was able to pull a lot of this out at one time. He got lucky with it, or he just knows what he's doing. I'd like to think he just knows what he's doing, but... Just look up in there, and if you have problems, just go ahead, switch to that copper wire, make a hook, and put it up in there, and that way you can scrape that meat free. So the only thing that has me worried right now is that this stuff, got it on Amazon, it says the ingredients is water, hydrogen peroxide, phosphorus acid, and trisodium phosphate. And I don't know how much peroxide is in there, it's a 40V 40, 40 by Superstar, crystal clear peroxide. So all I did was take about half of the container, poured it in there, and then filled the rest with water. It's probably a one to three ratio, maybe a little bit more water, but um, the skull's been in there for three minutes and it's looking pretty white already. So I'll probably leave it in there another three or four minutes and then I'll take it out, pressure wash it, feel the top of it, see if the bone's starting to break down yet or not. And if it's not, I may throw it in there again, depending upon if I've got all the meat off or anything. But if all the meat comes off really easy and it's really white, then I'll soak it in there for about 30 seconds to a minute, take it off, pressure wash it just to get it clean, and then let it sit in the sun and let it dry. And then it'll be mop and glow tomorrow once it's fully dry. Yeah, so it's been in there seven minutes and it's already looking real white, so I'm gonna take it out. And then we're going to go ahead and use the pressure washer. I'll go ahead and throw that bottom jaw in there. stuff that is by the teeth is getting really soft but I think the bone is about there so I'm not gonna put it in anymore I'm gonna do like a one minute soak and then I'll call it Got the skulls done, set them in there for about max 10 minutes, got them out, pressure washed them, any other meat or uh, things around the teeth that I had to get off, put them back in there for a minute, 
let them get hot, took them out, rinsed them off, and let them dry. So overall, turned out pretty good. Um, the solution peroxide that I used was very strong, so I would use it, like dilute it a little bit more. Um, another thing was boiling the skulls after taking that gelatin out from in between the teeth. If you place that skull upside down with the teeth pointing up, they sunk down into the skull and I can't pull them back up. So just keep an eye on that and I'd probably face it pointing down, the teeth pointing down so that way they don't fall into the jaw where I can't grab them and pick them out. Bone is white, it dried good. This is all, all these videos are without mop and glue. I still have to do that. Um, but other than that, turned out pretty good. And this is the difference between a seven and a half foot alligator and an eight and a half foot alligator. Um, the one on the left was probably a female and the one on the right was probably a male. Uh, the males get bigger than the females. But um, the female on the left or the seven and a half footer Teeth turned out great, no missing teeth, uh, good hygiene and everything, got a bad shot placement on the jaw. The eight and a half footer on the right um, is where I had the problems with the teeth. So this is the difference between good shot placement and bad shot placement. So this one is bad shot placement. This is what it looks like when you have that bang stick and you hit it on top of that plate on top of the skull. You, you just ruin the skull so to say. Um, you normally aim behind that skull plate so that way you sever the spine and you can scramble the brains through that way. Now this one I did get a bad shot placement on I accidentally got in the jaw because it made a last movement at the very end so I did have to bang it again but that second bang stick was right behind the cap and you don't see any damage to the cap there. But as you see on that jaw it cracked it all the way up and blew off that side of it. So this is just the difference between a good shot placement and a bad shot placement. So I just thought I'd show you that and uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the scoots or you want to have some, go ahead and check out the Patreon page. It's linked right here. Check that out. It helps support JT Gatoring and if you want to, um, it's a great way to do it. So we'll see you next time on JT Gatoring.